Good evening and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. In addition to what is listed in our, in our bulletin, K uh, Kayla Holly and Peyton uh, Trexler will be playing two duets, uh, the first Noel and O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We do have a cellist this evening. Oh, is she here? Margo? Okay.
are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and ever pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary soul rejoices for yonder a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine. was born oh night oh holy night oh night divine truly he taught us to love one another law is love and his gospel is peace chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymn of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name for
Are you waiting for me? Okay, here I come. Merry Christmas. On winter's deepest night, we welcome the light of Christ with bells and brass and choir and all kinds of music and celebration. Because into the midst of a world that is troubled, Christ's birth brings fulfillment of God's amazing love. Filled with the light and the love of Christ this night, we hope that you will be inspired to go forth to share this light and this news with the world. Let us rise for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in flesh, our life and our salvation. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, let us confess our God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all and call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that you are our resources and our security. Conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation mercy on us, where we are self-centered, open our hearts, where we are reluctant, give us courage, where we are cynical, restore our trust, renew us with your grace, and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. The peace of our newborn Jesus, or Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. And also with you, let us share a sign of God's peace. guys match.
May the grace of Jesus, our newborn King, the love of God who came to dwell with us, and life together in the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace." His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. God. The second lesson is from the second chapter of Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the gospel.
the Holy Gospel for this Christmas Eve is told as recorded in the second chapter of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world was to be registered. This was the first registration while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Each went to their own hometown to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. He went with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their sheep at night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. For this night to you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, glorifying God and singing glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel returned and went into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go and see this thing which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with hate, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known everything that had been told them concerning the child, and all who heard them were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. So good evening. How is everybody tonight? All right, I'm going to make you do that again. This is Christmas Eve. How are you tonight? Good. That's a little better. That's a little better. So who can tell me what you we call this display that's up here in behind me? Liliana? Nativity. A nativity. And what is contained in a nativity? What do you see, Andrew? Animals. Animals? What do you see, Natalie? Is there anything you see? Baby Jesus. All right, Jesus. Nora, what do you see? The three wise men. The wise men. George, what do you see? Mary. Mary. What do you see, Hannah? Okay. I'll read your mind. Hannah sees Joseph. So 
We've got animals, we've got wise men, we've got a shepherd and sheep, we've got a bull, a cow, a donkey, Joseph and Mary. But I think something's missing. What do you think's missing? You got it? Nora? You started to raise your hand. I thought you were going to say something. Liliana has the answer. Angels. Angels. Where are the angels? Well, let's talk about angels. What is an angel? Who knows what an angel is? Do you know? No? Do you know? No? We had them in our gospel just a minute ago. George, what's an angel? A fairy. A fairy. Well, yeah, that's a good start. Thank you, George, for breaking the silence here. <laughs> Andrew, what's an angel? Like a spirit, kind of. All right, a spirit. Liliana, come on, give it a try. I bet they're glittery like your eyes are tonight, right? So angels, well, they can be a lot of things, but most importantly, they're God's messengers. There was an angel who was called Gabriel who told Mary that she was going to be the mother of God's son. And there was a whole host of angels that came to the shepherds who were out in the field in the darkness and told them the good news that Jesus had been born. Otherwise, there would have been no way for them to know that. So angels can be like Gabriel and bring somebody really good news. They can be like a whole chorus of voices that are singing praise to God. Angels also can guard people, like the angel that guarded Daniel in the lion's den. Or they can warn people of danger, like the angel that warned Joseph in a dream that Herod was after his son Jesus, and so they had to flee to Egypt for a while to stay safe. But most of all, angels are created by God to do some pretty special work. They're always good, and they always bring good news. And tonight, what the angels have told us is that God's son was born in Bethlehem. And he was born to be the savior of everyone. He was born to bring love to the earth and to teach us how to love better. So tonight, the angel's message should make us happy too. For Jesus was born as a baby. Jesus is our Savior. And Jesus is always with us, both when we're happy and when we're sad. So what I want to do is I want to say a little prayer for our nativity scene. Would you bow your heads and join me? O oh Lord, our God, with Mary and Joseph, angels and shepherds, and the animals in the stable, we gather around your Son, born for us. Bless us with your holy presence and inspire us to help those who have no place to dwell. Be with us that we might share in Christ's love with all the world, for he is our light and salvation. Glory in heaven and peace on earth now and forever. Amen. And before you go, I have something for you. Just a simple sheet that you can draw. Use your imagination to draw some angels. Draw the angel Gabriel. Draw a picture of lots of angels in the sky singing. And if you really want to use your imagination... Draw a picture of what a modern-day angel might look like. Okay? Thank you. You can go back.
You may have seen or heard it in the headlines recently. There will be no Christmas in Bethlehem this year. No parades, no visitors to the holy sites, not even a Christmas tree in the town square, not even a manger set up with shepherds and angels and wise men. No Christmas where war is raging. No Christmas where people do not have it in their hearts to celebrate. No Christmas because it is too dangerous even to go out to worship. What there will be is the sight of the baby Jesus in front of one church that decided to place him gently on top of the rubble of a recently destroyed home. No Christmas seems to be quite ironic as if anyone can cancel Christmas or prevent people from celebrating or act as if Jesus was never born on that holy night in this city of Bethlehem where thousands of years ago Christ was born among us, born in the flesh. There's a lot of irony about this. And yet as I read the news the words of Paul that he wrote to the, the people of Galatia come, came to mind. He said, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. What does Paul mean by fullness of time? Does it mean when humankind was ready? When humankind had evolved enough, been enlightened enough, or was desperate enough? Tired enough of war and suffering to beg God to come and do something about it? With the birth of Jesus occurring in the fullness of time, you have to wonder if God himself had grown sick and tired of what was happening in those days on the earth? Or was this fullness of time preset by God from the beginning of time? Was there some axis toward which the wheel of time had turned, some central time, some point of grounding, some universal time when the world and all creation needed to pivot towards something absolutely and wonderfully new. There's a lot of irony in the way God chose to be born. Born human in the cold, dank starkness of a Bethlehem night against the backdrop of an empire so obsessed with keeping the peace that they enforced it with brute force. There is a lot of irony to the way God will make himself known this year in Bethlehem. In Gaza, in the West Bank, in the Ukraine, on board the carriers that are carrying our military personnel guarding that area. There's a lot of irony everywhere where God will show up, where there is war, hunger, discrimination. In short, everywhere there is sin. Just as there is irony tonight in the way Christ will make himself known to us tonight under our own circumstances of time and place. God's coming into the flesh did not occur by some chance or whimsy. It is clearly something God wanted and wants us to continue to notice and take into careful contemplation. An impoverished young girl and her fiancé wander into town unnoticed at the very time when she is about to deliver her very first child. The couple is dirt poor, the man being the farthest and least of the descendants of King David and the woman barely a teenager. They came under the demand of the Roman government, making their way through the wilderness 
to Joseph's hometown. And even though this was his home, no family member, no innkeeper, no friend or childhood friend was there to welcome them and take them in. No one to look after them on this night when help would have been so so very much needed. Yet alone and without even the benefit of a midwife or mother, against all the powers of oppression afforded by Rome, they manage to give birth to the Savior of the world. Remember what the angel said to Mary when he told her about her future, bearing God's Son. Gabriel said, For nothing will be impossible with God. In the darkness of a world gripped by evil, isolation, and oppression, overwhelming light is brought to birth through what was very ordinary and unnoticed, to be witnessed by the untamed, the unexpecting, and the unprepared. It is in this that the irony of holiness in the midst of conflict Celebration in the midst of mourning, light shining through darkness, salvation planted in the midst of rubble. It is right here where irony meets the fullness of time. Blessed, holy fulfillment, despite the circumstances of time and place. For despite the contrariness of the world, The miracle of hope awakened the whole creation to the salvation that comes from God through a Savior much greater than David or Caesar. This good news ignited in the midst of a world that could not see, but now could see, that was unable to hope, but now could hope eternally, that didn't know how to love, but now could love even the enemy. Because God showed us how. Good news was brought to life in remembrance of the promise now made eternal and irrevocable for all who believed that Jesus, God in human flesh, would indeed be the Savior of the world. The fulfillment came in days of war and oppression in ancient Bethlehem. And we can be assured that it will come tonight in Bethlehem and Gaza and the West Bank, the Palestinian territory, Ukraine, and everywhere across this earth. Even amidst the bombs and the fear in the morning, even in the absence of public celebration. All of this bewildering irony has been replaced with a demonstration of love that despite all that seems opposed to love, proves time and again to be God's way of conquering evil once and for all. As Paul wrote to Titus, who was a late first century church elder, for the grace of God appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's love is the fulfillment. Summed up in the great mystery of the faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Into every corner of the whole earth, God is bringing blessed hope to life. Here into our midst, and even into Bethlehem, this very night. Let us pray. Savior Jesus, you have come to us in our vulnerable, heartbroken, conflicted human condition. Inspire us to rejoice because in the manner of your coming, you took on the burdens of humankind. You took on our burdens and lightened them with your love 
compassion, and hope. In this way, you have brought and will continue to bring the light of healing and peace into lives so hungry for hope. Bless all your dear children in places of war and famine, as well as in places of peace and well-being, everywhere in the world tonight and always. And we say, as did the angels, Alleluia! Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth tonight and forever. Amen. Let us rise. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, Behold the heavens, there shone a holy night. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born under Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, saints 
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite all who are able to kneel for the prayers. Trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. Glory to you, God, for the song of the angels, proclaiming to the world Christ's holy birth. Give your church a joyful song to sing that we bring the good news of peace and salvation to all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> Glory to you, God, for the stars that shine in the depth of the night. Provoke all in our hearts at the expansive mystery of all creation. Open us to find beauty in the clear darkness of night and in the first glimmers of dawn. Hear us, O God. <clears throat> Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for the child born to us who establishes a kingdom of justice and righteousness. May the, may the babies born tonight, tomorrow, and in the new year restore our hope in your power to break bonds of oppression, bring reconciliation to warring lands, and establish peace from this time onward and, and forevermore. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, mm. for Mary's loving care. Lead us to tend to one another in time of need that even in the midst of our celebrations, those most in need may not be forgotten. Share the comfort of your presence with all people tonight who are alone or separated from loved ones due to estrangement, incarceration, or illness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for the faithfulness of the shepherds in their vocation. Grant rest to any who feel exhausted from their work during this season, all who work in hospitals and nursing homes, retail and restaurant workers, church musicians, administrative staff and clergy, organizers of charitable giving events, and service workers doing essential tasks. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Are there other concerns or persons for whom we should pray? For Sue. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for the multitude of the heavenly hosts. We rejoice in the zeal of all your saints who have witnessed the appearing of your grace and who reveal to us your salvation for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen.
bleak midwinter, frosty winds made warm. As stood hot as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow. Let us pray. God of abundance, receive the bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace. Pour it out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us and awaken your people. Fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. The congregation may be seated. I invite those who are communing in the pews and those communing online to commune at this time. And for our children worshiping tonight online, may the Lord Jesus come into your hearts with love and peace always. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
want to say a special thank you tonight for all who have participated to make our Christmas Eve services most special. I want to thank Donna and Martin, our choir, the handbells, the brass, Sarah, the children who read at the earlier service, people back there in the AV booth, way up high, and of, and of course, the members of the Altar Guild. And to thank this congregation for giving me seven of the most wonderful Christmas Eves I've ever celebrated anywhere. Thank you. And now may God bless you and keep you. May Jesus grant you grace and truth and the Spirit send peace upon your hearts now and forever. Amen. 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 Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim this good news. Thanks be to God.